Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Glaswegian Geeks. I'm currently sitting barely barely with with my good pal James here. We we've just been through a traumatic experience here. What? Mm. We armor. we went there. Where am I? We we went there. I think I died. We we done it. We 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 done what we said we'd never do and watch a shit movie. Oh yeah, no, again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, uh, I forgot that. Yeah. Well, um, well, this brings a whole new category of shit. So, yeah, it's fine. We've we've watched that. And th- the time movie. that I was like unconscious or dead, did your rabbit like you know spray something in my mouth <laughs> that brought me back to life? Am I now rabbit man? No, uh, Cookie did not halitosis you back to life. <laughs> so I'm not rabbit man. <laughs> no. What if I want to be rabbit man? You can be rabbit man, James. You I can will be, be rabbit the man. rabbit man. <laughs> Will be the rabbit man. <laughs> yes, so we did indeed watch Halle Berry's Catwoman, and I am not in a good place after it. I'm, 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 I'm ready to say that that is worse than you know the Captain Americas that we've just watched. Like indeed, how, how can, like, how something like what was that like near twenty five years prior? Is actually better than this. How how do you get some something on the level of that shit? Like you've you've got technology, you've got better camera, you've got better sound, you've got CGI. I guess just bad acting just shows through any generation. Let's not talk about CGI because the CGI cat in this just is a no no. <laughs> like I'm not saying that it's difficult. I'm not saying that it's not difficult to do CGI. I couldn't personally do it. But a fucking cat. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We cats are dicks, right? Do you think they're going to, like, hold on. Oh, we've got show cats that will walk to where we want it to and sit and do what we want. No, of course they're going to CGI it. Oh, just... But, yeah, let's... Uh, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Let, let's take that journey, everybody. Let's Let's just... All rejoice in the fact that the DC expanded cinematic universe isn't ever going to be as shit as this. And if this movie was to be a tie-in to any other movie, I'd just be like, kill them. Just just kill them all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, luckily it doesn't really tie into anything which, you know, it lives in a little world of its own, which is where it belongs, to be honest. Um... For anyone who doesn't know anything about the film, Halle Berry portrays Patience. Patience Phillips. Who is... um, Supposed to be Catwoman. No, she is Catwoman. Supposed to be. The film established that. No, no, James. Shut up. Let me speak. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in a bad place. I'm very tender right now. We're both in bad places right now. I know, but I'm gay. Therefore, (laughs) I am needy. And I'm angry. And I'm lacking a lot of gin. (laughs) <laughs> so I need to I need to let this all develop in my head. But yeah, um th- the film starts off with patience. She she's genuinely quite a boring she, she's a, she's a basic uh, kinda bitch. She's a basic bitch. Kinda like stumbly, clumsy, you know. She's a basic bitch. <laughs> and um yeah, she you know she works for a she works in the art department of a beauty, beauty firm. Um, yeah, yeah, go yeah with that. We'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. I mean, fuck it. <laughs> Nobody who made this film knew what they were doing, so clearly you know, we don't obviously know what we're talking about. But uh, yeah, um, so patience gets told by her boss that she's got to redo a poster and you know blah 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 blah. She you know, does it, and then she goes into the restricted area. No, 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 no. We're forgetting one of the best parts of the movie, James. How it can no how can we do part. this? Uh, she's in her apartment drawing, you know, designing, painting, <laughs> and uh, she sees a cat at her window because, you know, that's possible. And then she hears a cat, and it's stuck. It somehow got somewhere and it's stuck. If I've learned so one thing in my life, a cat is never stuck. Right? A cat is never stuck. Just, I don't know. Like, 
Anytime you see a cat and it's stuck in a tree or something, that cat can easily... It got the there. Tree. It got there. It, it, it got can get back down. Yes, yes. It'll take time, but it'll get there. But this cat appears that, you know... Such uh, a weird time. Such a weird time at her at her window. And she starts talking to it. Uh, uh, as She's a cat lady. a budding cat woman would do. Um... And she starts talking to the cat, and then she asks the cat if the cat's stuck. The cat doesn't respond to her naturally because it's a fucking cat. <laughs> uh, but she thinks that's the cat's way of saying, yes, I am stuck, please come and help me. Which leads to this incredibly barbaric scene of pain. Like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, if there's a cat stuck, what are you going to do? But Oh, I'm going to step out of my fucking window ledge. Yeah, you wouldn't catch and me at my fucking window. Here's the cat. thing. See, if it was my cat, like my own cat, and it was stuck, then yes, I would do that because it's my cat. Well, you're a fucking idiot. Like, no, no, but like you, I'd say, I'd say I'd probably look after a pet better than I do a child. Like, so that's why I will never have, ki- have kids. Touch wood, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> can't, can't just totally cut it off. But anyway, shall, off topic. Shall I get your fiance on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> She's in the same boat as me, so we're good for now. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I'd look after a cat, well, any animal, better than a child. So if that thing's stuck, then yes, I'm going to try and save it, you know. But she's trying to save a cat that isn't even hers. And then she I'll pure... T- I'll tell you why she done that, because she's a good human being. She's a good human being. She would do that for a cat. That, that she doesn't even care about. That that is that is true humanity, right? So I will not hear another word. About there is it. no humanity because of this. Can we talk film. about what the scene is actually about and how she jumps out to save this cat? Then the cat disappears and the police officers like, oh my god, this woman's trying to kill him, commit suicide. It escalates <laughs> so quickly, and I'm just like, I have no words. Like, and then oh, when the detective in yes, the space of ten seconds, literally the space of ten seconds was all it took him to climb up to her apartment. Not that he would know exactly what door it was. Oh, no, sh- he shouted, what apartment are you? And she said 23, I think. Oh, you expect me to pick up on that? <laughs> <laughs> you, too much is happening. And, and, and she's about to fall. And it's like, She's not really that high up. Just catch her when she falls. Yeah, she's maybe about 20 feet up. Oh, well, maybe 30. Uh, go, with, go, with, go with 30. Sure, surely people, it would have been a better solution to catch her. Oh, like, no, oh I, was, I thought you were going to say it'd be a better solution to let her die. <laughs> I'd be down with that, but I saved this movie. I'm I'm not a horrible human being. I mean, you know, she, she doesn't deserve. To this movie does not deserve to exist. <laughs> it doesn't. It, the th- fact is that I've got the DVD sitting in my room r- here right now is barbaric. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we'll ever we'll ever view this again. I don't think I'll recover for this. Anyway, let's go back to talking about this heap of shit. Yeah, so, so after, after said scene, she goes back to work, you know, she, she fixes the thing that her boss told her to fix, uh, which was like a poster for like the... the their the new product. The, their new uh, uh, beauty marble makeup, um, which we'll touch on later, because it is like so unbelievably villainously bad like yes. that it just hurts. But yeah, uh, she does that, and then, you know, she calls someone up, apparently, to say, could you send this to him, and he's like, oh, no, I can't. So she's like, okay, I'll do it myself. And she ends up in a, in a warehouse, not the man's house, a warehouse on the seafront. You know, I think it's a lab where they're actually making the product. I think yeah, that's... I but, but here's the thing, like, oh, the guy's there, okay, I'll just go and see him. Like, seriously? What normal She, she can just walk in here, like... Is there no security? Like, any lab anywhere, guarantee you, high fences, cameras, motion sensors, like, she security! In, she literally walked in the front door. Like, I know, and then, oh, her. a big door we restricted on it. Oh, what's in here? I'll just walk this way. La, 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 la. Oh. Then she finds out uh, a severe plot twist that the new makeup line and the new beauty cream that this company are dishing out... Um, Basically, when used in long-term conditions, will kind of fuck up your face. It will disfigure you your makes face. Makes you look like Freddy Krueger, basically. Well, maybe not that bad, but you know. Uh, uh, I would say Freddy no, Krueger. No women in the. I mean, the is it Jack Errol Jones? Uh, it was Rorschach. Yeah. Yeah. See the Freddy uh, Nightmare on Elm Street that he was in. Mm-hmm. That level of Freddy Krueger. So it's uh, not yeah. too bad. 
<laughs> it's not too <laughs> bad. It's still horrific, but... <laughs> it's still not something you want to live with. So, yeah, why on earth would you use this cream? So the scientist is sort of like, I really don't want to be involved in this because I don't want to do this to people. Because if people stop using it, that's what's going to happen. And then the shady villain is like, oh, but that's where the money comes <laughs> from. <laughs> <laughs> they realise that it will hurt them and they will just keep buying. <laughs> Villainous. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that that was perfect. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but uh, it's just like it's just. It's, it's, don't get me wrong; it's a villain plot that you've never seen before. But this film appeals to a soul demographic. And who's that, James? Would you like to do? Would you like to do the honors? It's just all right. I'm a poof. I'll get away with it. <laughs> this film purely is for women. That's the that's the feel I get from it. Observing it, um, you know, it's it, this is very much a chick flick. You know, she's got the gay friend in the office, which I'm fucking furious about. She and why is that, James? Because why? Is, why, is does, the, why is does the gay man always have to be a stereotype? Oh, like, you know, I, th- I thought you weren't going to go to that point. Like, you know? I could tell he sucked cock before he spoke. <laughs> like that is that's exactly the well, kind of What was it he, he said about the police officer when he Man came sandwich. Out. There you go. Man there sandwich. You go. I've never referred to anyone as a man sandwich. <laughs> and it's bad because I'm sitting there like, oh my lord, like I think it's bad when you can tell somebody sucks cock before they speak. <laughs> I think that's bad. Yeah, so (laughs) on the other note, she Uh, has um, uh, another friend who's a sexual deviant who I was living for. (laughs) (laughs) She brought um, a lot of comic relief to this film. Now, let me tell you, relief was a hard thing to come by in this movie. So obviously when it appears you're just like oh my god yes so every time you see her she's just talking about how she wants to sleep with someone and um it, she j- she just brings a little bit of kind of humor there even though i'm just like you are a needy bitch but um the, my biggest problem with her her circle of friends was you know that stereotypical gay character <laughs> that's just it embarrasses me <laughs> it embarrasses me because i'm like I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like that. People <laughs> will look at this and think, I'm like that when I'm <laughs> not like that. Like, it's just, it's one of the ones. I think I think it was just, th- this film is appealing to near enough every possible demographic that isn't a white person. That's the thing I'm getting from it. And I'm not, like, obviously I'm not meaning that in a bad way. But, it, I mean, it's good that obviously when you take something and you twist it, but not to this level of bad. It's like, Selena Kyle in the comics is a white, strong, white, independent female character. It always has been. So in this, they've made a black... No, that's not an issue. It's The issue is Halle Berry can act, right? And she doesn't sell it. And she overplays it. And naturally, we'll get to the bit when she gets her powers. Which, let me tell you, anyone who knows Catwoman from the comic books knows that she doesn't have superpowers. Well, this yeah. film decided, let's give her fucking superpowers then. Let, let's but just get on to that, like, the total divergence from the base comics, right? If you know your stuff, Catwoman, she's a cat burglar, and from a relatively young age, I believe, she's in that kind of... What's what's the what's word I'm looking for? that kind of like area she's in almost like poverty yeah well yeah she's in, she's she comes from like a sort of impoverished family which is uh well it's always weird because they do kind of they they have kind of tweaked the story here and there as as they do um, every character so it's nice to see little bits thrown in but like there is nothing to do with catwoman or Catwoman that's in this, apart from the costume and the whip. Yeah, okay. I mean, there isn't much in terms of genuine Catwoman ness here. I mean, that Catwoman has the potential as a character to be a fearsome film. 
Like it, it could be a film, not this one in particular, <laughs> but a proper um, adaption of one of the comic books could make you know because she's 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 such a strong character. She's always got the plan. She knows what she's doing. You know, she does everything for herself. You know, that to me is quite empowering. You know, even though she's a thief, and I do not encourage women to go out and start stealing jewelry, or art, or clothes, but. To me, it's sort of like, um, you know, it, w- it would empower people. And this film, I get the feeling, was trying to do that, but completely fell on its ass because there's not an interesting enough story. The acting is unbelievably bad. And, you know, it, it's just, it hurts me. It hurts me. Like, because I love Catwoman and I would have liked to have liked this, but I can't. <laughs> it w- it would be it would go against everything I believe in to like this movie, because I think it's great that you know they've they've put characters of different races in it. I'm happy that they tried to do that, but it's the fact that it just feels that they've done that to prove a point. This film feels like it's trying to make a point and or make a statement, which is irrelevant. And at least that's what it is to me. If you go into a political side, the film in general is just naff. Don't go near it. Um. But yeah, in terms of like, you know, Catwoman has a story that I think people could kind of find relatable in a weird way. I mean, it depends, like, you know, how you see it. I mean, she's always someone who's pushed people apart and been lonely and she's let herself be that way because she thinks her life is easier that way. And people, you know, people get like that. You know, she's totally a relatable character, even though, you know, she is a thief and, you know, thieving is bad. Yes, very bad. People don't do it public service announcement <laughs> <laughs> don't do it if you weren't raised right by your parents don't steal <laughs> yeah like the origins obviously varies and stuff and it's our original one uh, our obsession with cats came from her father owning a pet store and stuff so she, like she became a burglar and whatever and retconned it and it's but <laughs> All I'm going to say is, her origins are nowhere near this bad. Her many origins don't even resemble this. No. Like, uh, like going back to the lab, she gets chased after she's she stumbles across this plot to make more money. More money. The, uh, she is in crawling through a waste pipe. Don't know if it's shit, but it, if it was a shit... Pipe, a shit waste. It pipe. was a waste disposal pipe. I'm yes, totally it would. It, it would right totally now. go with the theme of this movie. Shit streaming everywhere. Shit made cat women. <laughs> <laughs> shit wore cat women, <laughs> and shit ended cat women. That is kind of it. Um, uh, right. So, so our powers, right? Like, you dis- cat, you describe cat. this better than I do. You describe how the cat gives her powers better okay. than I do. Okay, so in the comics, Catwoman is seen to be athletic. She's done this for years, so, you know, she's had lots of practice and stuff. So, she's, it's her she ability, it's, it's not anything powered. She's, she's it's cunning, not she's quick, she's experienced, and she's smart. Yes. You know, all stuff that, sh- she's self-made, you know, she's she is her because she made herself this way. Uh, again... An empowering point. Yeah, so Catwoman's origins of her powers are very strange in this. Because in the comics, as you know, Catwoman has no powers. It's just her God-given ability and years, years of experience. So from this, we have to assume that, hell, the movie might go that way. It might go with that way. But no, unfortunately, it's not. And from the opening credits, you see lots of cats over Egyptian times and paintings and drawings and little shit to make you go, hold on, this, if, I, if I stepped into the wrong movie here. Is it too late to hemorrhage now? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, the, the, the film's story kind of bases on the concept that Catwoman has been a figure through history. Yes. Uh, there has always been a woman through history who has been given cat-like powers and it implies that, you know these previous cat women have all been heroic in some way. They've helped people, they've saved people. 
And I'll say one thing that they do kind of get right with this is that this cat woman doesn't want to be a hero. She gets involved because it's personal to her. Yeah. You know, which is obviously... Selena Kyle will only get involved in something if it's personal to her. Like, which is what they've done right. You know, she didn't go out her way to do something for the sake of it. She's doing it for a reason. And it's because something that personally affects her because it affects, you know, her friend. You know, so that's one thing they got right. Um, she gets these supernatural powers from a cat after, you know, being... After the worst uh, CGI cat ha- uh, breathed its halitosis breath on her and brought her back to life. That's That's something special right there. Yes, then she wakes up and she realises that she's got pretty much powers close to Spider-Man's, to be quite honest. Like and shit all over her face. And shit all over her face, yeah. Um, <laughs> which is what I'm feeling right now after watching it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you have that. So she has these powers and then, you know, she goes to her house. Logically, you would assume she just the door. I don't know if she lost her keys or anything along the way, but she just jumps up and smashes through the window because, you know, cat-like instinct. You yeah, know, that's do what, what you cats want. do. Do whatever you want and no one will care. Um, and yeah, you know, certain events transpire. Like, the whole middle of the film is just... It's very bland. It's, it's flat. It the acting is... Sackable. The over, the, over the top. The acting is, you're going to jail. <laughs> like, you have <laughs> stolen money from me. Like, you paid, what, 10p for this? Like, this DVD? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I still feel robbed, and I didn't even pay the 10 pence. <laughs> like, it's just, like, odds. and But, y- you know, sh- the kind of middle is about her getting used to these powers, like, establishing that she has a bit of an attitude. Um, establishing that she can take anybody on because she's instantly agile, she's instantly all that stuff, and she she gets to grips with it fairly quickly. But you know, all that stuff is just bland. It's irrelevant. It's just tip. It's proper typical superhero stuff. Nothing you really need to see. Like how many times do I need to see Spider Man get used to his powers? How many times yeah. do I need to see Uncle Ben hit the ground? How many times do I need to see Martha Wayne's pearl necklace? scatter over the ground before I get the point in my head that these people died, <laughs> got powers, <laughs> and now have to learn how to use their powers. I don't want to know how they learn to use their powers. I just want them to kick some fucking ass. That's all I want. Well, there is a lot of ass kicking in this movie. Well, uh, I'd say maybe. Our first kind of real altercation is with a noisy neighbour next door. Who <laughs> noisy neighbour, noisy neighbours. Like I know, like having a house party. It's like a big <laughs> house party. And, um, yeah, she turns up and she just, you know... No, she doesn't even really fight with him. She still just, just, like... Like, soaks his speakers, <laughs> soaks him, then just knocks him to the ground. Like... That's pretty much it. Yeah, and then uh, she goes into her dating emergency <laughs> box, which, well, James, if it's at the back of the cupboard and it's in a big black box... I'm expecting Something a big, kinky a big is going to happen. Well, th- I'm sure the whip's in there. I'm telling you, like... The whole outfit's there. But that's the thing, like, the way the character... This this is the thing, though. Like, our Th- that, character... Like, uh, our character before she gets a halitosis cat powers is she's kind of mousy. Like, she's, she's she, like she she doesn't have the confidence to pull something like this off. Which, you know, is clearly visible. Like, she's taking shit... Off her boss and just like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to do this, I'll do this, I'll she do this. She gets shit off her neighbours. She gets shit on by everyone, which, good metaphor. She gets shit <laughs> on before she gets her powers. She, you know, she's pretty much shit on by everyone and, you know, life just treats her badly. But then when she comes back to life with these powers, which they totally stole from Michelle Pfeiffer, by the way. Yes. Like, they absolutely stole that from Michelle Pfeiffer. And I think they watched that and thought that is actually how Catwoman came to be. Like, and it well, probably is somewhere in one of her many origin stories, but... It's just like, it, it's just to me, it just doesn't seem authentic enough. And with a film like this, you want to make it, you know, with, with any superhero film, you know, you don't have to make it realistic, but you do have to ground it a bit. And it feels like things just happen far too fast in this. Like you say, at the start of the film until she, you know, dies, um, like 20 minutes in. Yeah. Um, she 
she, you know, she is mousy and she does let people, you know, take the piss right out of her. So she doesn't have that confidence. So why, when a cat breathes halitosis on you, <laughs> do you get the confidence to just, you know, really grind and become a, that that character? You know, I think it would have made it better if she w- she had a bit of a nasty streak at the start. Yeah. Like, she had it, but she just kept it back because she knew, like, maybe there was, you know, she could have done something. Um, but, you know, apparently cat power gives you confidence. So I'll um, be looking out for that. Get a cat. <laughs> get a cat. But, uh, like, we need to get into the story. Like, there is so much wrong. Like, the first chance that she properly gets to use her powers, well, show off her powers. Is in a burglary scene? Yeah. That, well, you're thinking she, she stole this guy's motorbike, her neighbour's motorbike, and then she's drove off to a jewelry store that she walked past before and was was mesmerised by it. Yes, Th- this one of a kind necklace, which is actually really interesting because Catwoman genuinely specialises in oh, stealing one of a kind items. This is the thing, this is the parts that actually kind of do the origins in the comic books justice. Like, the whole one of a kind thing, that is Catwoman. Like, she loves, oh, don't get me wrong, she'll she love jewels and anything of any kind but, but she wants it one offs is like she wants it as hers yes you know, like that's her um and this is the thing in the burglary scene she has like a sort of makeshift outfit with like black leather like with black leather trousers heels and a leather jacket and she has like a sort of masquerade black cat mask which is a much better outfit than, than the one she ends later. up with like i've never seen like that kind of original outfit like, <laughs> you know, like, the original, the first outfit that a character wears being better than the one that comes after it, the one that, you know, yeah. comes after and, you know, is the iconic style for them. It's it's odd to me, but what this kind of film does as well is it makes it that she's, you know, that side of her that steals and stuff is like a, a bipolar sort of thing where she doesn't know that it's happening. Yeah. It's just happening. Like and then she wakes up and she sees that she stole all this jewelry and she's just like, Oh my god, I need to take all of this back. And she keeps the one off necklace. Which, you know, very cat women. Which I was okay with. <laughs> but um yeah, it's 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 just like they're trying to find an excuse as to why she's doing things. Yeah. And I don't think that that was never cat women. Cat women done something because she wanted She to wanted do it. it. She's a badass bitch. She does what she wants. She's an independent woman, and I would be straight for her if she was real. <laughs> and that is the end of that. Like, the fighting in the jewellery store, uh, as she's looking at this necklace, she notices a couple people uh, stealing jewels and stuff. So she, out of the goodness of her own heart, if that's a thing for this character, decides, I'm going to stop them. So she starts fighting them, which is actually one of the better parts of this movie if I'm being brutally honest yeah because um yeah because she's um you know she she's there with an intention and you're like oh is she gonna steal it you know and then she's like and then she sees these people in the background who have broken in and she's just like oh how convenient I don't even have to break in I can just walk in you know like and then she she deals with them and she fights with them and it's almost like she takes the jewellery and stuff as a sort of, oh, this is my reward <laughs> for stopping a burglary. I'm just going to steal everything. But then when she wakes up in the morning, she takes it all back. Yeah. So, uh, you know, apart from a few odd ones oh, of course she wants to keep naturally. But, um, yeah, it, it's weird. It's, it, it, it tries to discern that, you know, that Patience is one character and Catwoman is a completely different character. And it almost feels like, you know, patience is trying to struggle to hold that side of her in to be presentable and respectable around people it's almost like it sends a bad message about cats to be honest <laughs> it implies <laughs> cats, cats are nuts. just troublemaking bastards <laughs> that's what it implies to me like and i, I love cats like this is a bad <laughs> this is bad <laughs> for cats also we're f- uh skipping past one of the uh i was gonna say one of the funniest but one of the most shocking scenes in the movie 
right after she gets halitosis powers, she goes to the catum cactorum. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. The catum cactorum. One more time. Catum cactorum. And for those that don't understand what I'm saying here, sanctum sanctorum, but for cats. Yes, there is a, a lovely little old woman. Um, a crazy cat lady, if you, if you may. <laughs> <laughs> crazy cat lady. Um, she presents a sort of mentor role to Miss Halle Berry. To yes, to, to patients. Um, and t- goes on telling her all about how the, uh, you know, cat women roamed the world and, you know, have lived through time. And, and there's always been a cat woman. And there has always been a cat woman. And it's always been given powers descended from the head cat women from Egyptian times. You think I'm making this up. I'm really not. We're, like we're, we're really not pulling your, pulling your chain here. Like, this is, like, literally, this is some serious <laughs> shit. Like yes. So, <laughs> the first cat woman was sort of, like, some kind of being from Egyptian times who, you know, passes on her powers through cats and then the cat, you know, uh, whatever, we, we I don't know. I you don't you think, you, you don't really need to understand how it happens. Just know that it fucking does, all right? We're trying to convince you not to watch this film. We're, <laughs> oh, we're also trying to convince you to watch it so that you can listen back to us and go, shit, those guys are right. Fuck, I don't even know how to respond to that and neither did they. Wow. <laughs> they spoke for about an hour just talking about shit. Can, can we talk? Can we talk about this one bit and then we'll go Oh, 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 oh wait, there's the... The catnip. Oh, <laughs> no. <gasps> so this little old lady oh, uh, please decides... Please let me finish my story. Oh, 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 sorry, James, sorry. So the lovely little old lady mm. decides to convince Patience that she must take up the mantle as Catwoman. But no, it is not to be. Patience does not believe Crazy Old Lady. And as Patience tries to walk out, Crazy Old Lady opens a box and throws catnip at her. And it's literally this scene of Halle Berry, <laughs> literally with a bit of catnip, rubbing it around her face and her nose, like... Like, like take as if it's like an eight ball of coke, just like... <laughs> oh, get it all in. I need to end me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a scene that I did not need to see. Like, the th- this movie goes too far. Like... It's a comic book movie, clearly, but James, it goes too far for my liking. Like comic books, are too far. To, 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 to remotely even think of a comic book movie going too th- too fucking far is beyond a fucking joke. Yeah, I mean, it's like, how how much further do you need to go? We know that it's an unbelievable thing that Spider-Man gets bit by a spider and gets powers of a spider. We know that that's out of the ordinary. I don't want to see him fucking struggling to get out of somebody's bathtub. I don't need to see that. I don't need to see things like her sniffing catnip. I don't need that. What I need is just her to be her and just be the character. That's all. They come on set. That's all I want them to do. Who wrote this? Who actually thought, this is a great idea. This is an amazing idea. Clearly a fucking maniac. <laughs> oh my god, I just I just can't. Anyway. So, so, can't af- so after after our one scene in the good costume, our, our next scene as Catwoman is uh, basically what you see in the cover art. Just got our tits out. Tits out. Now, Catwoman... <laughs> Uh, that that's the thing. Catwoman is Catwoman a very is sexual sex being, basically. Yeah, she's 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 all sex appeal, but it's all like if you take that character in context, she's like that because she knows that it will get people's attention. She uses it and she has used it to distract people, to to kind of put people like sort of kind of put them low, off, like to put them off. They don't expect it. But it's this idea that Catwoman is so confident in her. Like, you know, she believes I'm sexy, I'm good looking. And she walks about like that because she's confident and comfortable in her own skin. This Catwoman just seems to... It's not even subtle. And I don't even blame Halle Berry for it because it's obviously not her decision. But it's like if you take the character in context, this Catwoman is literally doing nothing of benefit like you know her, her costume is just too much it's not a nice thing to look at 
like I'm looking at it, and I can admit when I think something's you know supposed to be sexy or attractive, but I'm sitting there looking at that, going, "Oh my god, put a shirt on, <laughs> put something on." I must be the only man in the world sitting there going, please put a shirt on, Catwoman. Like, this is not acceptable behaviour. This is just, does your mum know you're out like that? <laughs> like, it, it's just too much to me, the costume. Like, I get it, sex sells and stuff, okay? So, it is, but even I will say it's too much. It's not even a full bra. It's like, almost like a specialised kind of, bra, you know, like, from our dating emergency box, and just a pair of leather pants, again, but slashed, so it's supposed to be, like, our legs and our arse are show all the time as well, it's just, like, maybe just a little bit too much, and what is up with a fucking mask? Like, our mask, our face is more covered than our tits. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. The best line of the movie, James? <laughs> it's not the best line of the movie. It, it's the best by far. She asks for a white Russian. Now, if you know what a white Russian is, it's basically vodka and milk with ice. And she goes up, because this film is littered with cat puns, and she literally walks up. This is the most subtle cat pun in the whole film. But she walks up and she says, white Russian, hold the ice, hold the vodka. And the guy just gives her a glass of milk. And I'm just like, this hurts me. <laughs> like, this <laughs> physically hurts me. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know if anybody knew when too much was enough. When enough was enough. Like, it, it's just like, it is a film that tries to work solely on sex appeal. And it tries, to, and it doesn't even have a proper plot, really. It really doesn't. There's no tension in it. There's nothing saying, oh, she needs to get out of here. And she needs to do it quick. Because if she doesn't, like, ugh. It's like a rom-com. You know in rom-coms, there's very rarely any tension? Yeah. You know? It's like that because in the middle of it, she's she's kind of, you know, dating this police officer who's looking for Catwoman when she is Catwoman. But, you know, she has to keep that secret. That's where a lot of your, your filler is, is in that story. And there doesn't tend to be a lot of tension in between that. This is why I'm saying it feels more like a rom-com. It feels like, you know, rom-com superhero movie, which we've seen before. But... It just doesn't really do enough for me. And obviously later on after that, you know, Catwoman's on the hunt for, you know, the big bad guy because she needs to stop him selling his face cream, <laughs> which we'll get to very soon. Yes, we will get to it. But yeah, like after the, what I do love though, and it's, I'm pushing it by saying love, is the club scene after she orders her her milk. The the kind of like dan oh it's not even dancing it's just oh there's a guy I want to follow, get the info from. I'm gonna head towards him, make a beeline, make it make myself stand out with a whip, clear the crowd. You know that's kind of Catwoman arrogant, kind of like over the top. I she's 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 smart in that way because she's in a club and no one knows who Catwoman is by this point. So she uses her anonymity to feel like she's part of the crowd. You know, she she fits in with the strip club and she looks like a dominatrix a wee bit. And this obviously piques the attention of the gentleman she's trying to interrogate. So, you know, that's smart. Some of the, like, the film is just terrible. I'm not saying that some of the ideas behind it aren't, you know, thought out enough to the character. Like, that is something Catwoman would do, you know. A lot of the stuff in this that Halle Berry does is something you would expect Catwoman to do. However, Halle Berry, you know, I'll, I'll go into a bit of it after we've finished describing the story, but Halle Berry just, you know, she doesn't do well for the action at all. Like, it's so overplayed. And I know that might not basically be her fault. She might have been directed to act that way, but my God, like, the acting is so bad. Well, that's just the thing. In a day, well, where superhero movies had started, Becoming kind of pushed to the forefront of your action genre. This, I don't even know if it's maybe they were told like play it up a little. It's a comic book movie, you know that comic books are over the top. Just, just, just go with it. Just, just put your all into it, even if it's absolute shit. It'll be good because it's a comic book movie. 
you know, I, I don't know if that's maybe it or something else. <laughs> Patience gets the blame, sorry, Catwoman gets the blame for killing someone. The scientist who was trying to stop making the, the face cream that was turning people mental or making them look hideous. This is where it sort of gets personal to Catwoman because when Patience goes to visit a friend who's in the hospital, she's in the hospital because she's been having severe headaches. And it turns out she's been using the cream, which, you, which, know, you know, is causing the headaches, causing that. Two and two. Yeah, you know, so that's when it becomes four, you know? This is when it kind of starts to kind of feel like an actual Catwoman related thing because, you know, it's her friend that's under danger now. So, you know, it's like, there is always a belief, you know, cats are arrogant little fuckers, but they, <coughs> they, they protect kind of supposed there's it's supposed to be that they would protect their own if you know it came to it i personally think cats are arrogant but i quite yes. like them because they're arrogant i'm arrogant i relate i'm cool <laughs> but also by this point the police officer is starting to it's catch kind of on hmm. that cat women and patients could be the same person yep um he does a lot of things like he deduces that the handwriting on a cup that she gave him because she stood him up at a date, said sorry on it, and then when she returns the bag of jewellery to the, the jewellery, she's written sorry on it, near enough the exact same way. This is a genuine plot point. They base it on her handwriting, which, you know... that That's a it's a good use for the police in the movie. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah Instead of just like, oh, oh, you're arresting this person, or oh, we'll never see you again, or we'll never suspect anything again. Yeah, and that's that's sort of that. Um, and then after you know he's trying to suss out if the handwriting is the same. Uh, they they go to the carnival. Catwoman actually does a superhero thing where she saves a child who's about to fall. Yeah, off after the, the big wheel just uh, collapses. <laughs> Near enough. Yeah. So you know, I want to know the regulations of this big wheel. It clearly wasn't checked before use. Well, I want to know the regulations of everyone involved in making this movie. <laughs> Right, because there was obviously no clear regulations involved. But Just um, like, hold on, do you like comic books? No, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> you're involved. But, um, yeah, it feels to me that they just got Halle Berry because she'd played a character in a comic book film before. She, um, Storm. She was Storm. But the thing is, Storm didn't make you want to see the X-Men. She was a B player, you know? But I think that might have been one of the reasons behind it. Because they oh, well th- been. maybe they thought, oh, Halle Berry's played Storm, wi- and she's sort of like an underrated character in X-Men, so let's see if we can take her and give her something in more of a star. And of course that's going to appeal to Halle Berry. Of course it is when you pitch it to her. Like, you know, you, if you say, I want Halle Berry, or Halle Berry audition, you know, she, she wants, you know, she wants that, that limelight, that, that spot, you know. Well, she's looking at as another... Possible uh, an franchise you know, for an her to maybe open up, you know. You know, doing that, and like I say, I've, I've never, I've not seen enough with Halle Berry in it to make an assumption whether or not she's a bad actress or not. However, what I will like say, like she is like actually a good actress. Like, yeah, was it not even uh, Halle Berry and Halle Berry, Halle Berry, and Monsters Ball? She won an, a, she won a fucking Oscar. Okay, yeah, okay. Like so, that. like. That's a female lead. So, in 2001, she was clearly hot property. But, <laughs> in this, she, she, it's clearly maybe one of the worst performances of, of her, uh, well, you know of her acting like career. <laughs> she, 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 she won an award before this. Yes, this so was out 2004. Do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just come out and say it, right? Eddie Redmayne. He won a he won a big award. I can't remember. I think it was an Oscar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He won an Oscar for the theory of everything, and um, you know now you're seeing him in films like Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, where people are criticising his performance because his performance is genuinely not a performance, really. In my opinion, I, you know I've seen Fantastic Beasts, and he's just so it, you know it's the shy British character, and. It's nothing you haven't seen before from him. Yeah. You know I mean, it's like, what, what if you you won a big award and that's it? You're instantly typecast for the rest of your career. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's that kind of way where it's it's just like you want to see more from Eddie Redmayne. And I'll give Halle Berry her due. She's obviously given something else in this film. <laughs> but it, it's that kind of thing. It's, you know, when you win an award, you're instantly hot property. People want you because, you know, people are like, oh my God, you know. Like, God, th- if we have an Oscar winner tied to this movie, then, people oh, that's going to bring eyes. 
Yeah. Whether it's good or bad. Yeah, and that's exactly it. Um, so maybe that was probably, you know, what they were thinking at the time. But, um, yeah, after, you know, um, c- uh, Patience saves, like, young child from dying a horrible death in a Ferris wheel. Yeah. Um, you know, Patience and her Catwoman gear jumps up to find the wife of the big bad guy. Yes. Who wants him dead, conveniently enough, which rings alarm bells, really. Like, you know, that should ring alarm bells in everybody's <laughs> head, really. <laughs> um, so Catwoman goes to the opera, you know, confronts him, blah, 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 blah. Bumps into policeman that she's dating. Policeman's like, oh, I think your patience. And Catwoman's like, no, so I'm not. Some, some bad jokes. like Some horrible, horrible, heinous jokes. Like, one-liners I wouldn't even dare repeating because I'm above that. I'm, I'm above those bad lines. I'm not. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, I, I don't even, I can't even go into detail talking about these things because they're just so boring. Uh, it's, it's really not good. I, I, there's nothing that's really drawn me in. Like, Do you know something? I'm just going to skip to the end, right, because there's nothing else really in between like, this that's Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> right, there's no point in explaining everything by this point, right, so I'm just going to come out and say it. At the end of the film, you find out that, you know, bad guy's wife actually has been using the cream for a very, very long time. And she kills her husband. And, and frames Catwoman. And frames Catwoman. Catwoman then gets sent. Patience then gets sent to jail. Oh, the th- another abysmal scene. So, the you know, the policeman has deduced by this point that, you know, Catwoman and Patience are the same person. And then sends Patience to jail. Patience sits in jail and she kind of reflects and she's like, oh, you know, well, this is personal to me. Then the cat that gave her a power. Halitosis cat. Squeezes through the bars and then you had Mario. Like, who as soon as that happened, I just went to James. Oh, I wonder if fucking Patience is going to do the exact same and squeeze through the bars. Like, Which, this, this, is, this movie is obvious with bad writing. If you know the kind of things a cat can do, you know what she's going to do. And, you know, she has powers of a cat. Yes. Like, she loves catnip all in her business. <laughs> which I'll never forget. And she has this kind of, like, cat vision. So, you know, there's there's our powers there. And Patience escapes, goes and confronts evil, big bad woman. And there's something I'm going to get into with this film at the end. Right? Yep. I think we're all going to get into some so a state I'm of gonna depression. Start, I'm going to start a fight, as <laughs> the great Pink once said. I'm going to get in trouble, and I'm going to start a fight. I'm going to get in trouble, Mario, and I'm definitely going to start a fight. But yes, Catwoman escapes prison by squeezing through the bars, even though or, or, her, anatomy, uh, her, 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 her anatomy stops her. <laughs> we're not going to go into what parts <laughs> of the anatomy, right? Because people would know her boobs and her ass, Booty. basically, are the only things she's fighting against to get out of the bars. Which she does get out, is you know, it's not a struggle. Oh, yeah, but that's to be later called upon. Um, so she sneaks out of the jail, she dresses up to Catwoman, goes and confronts the big bad boss woman, um, who says that if you use the cream long enough and you consistently use it, your skin just turns into, like, marble, basically, and you don't feel a thing. And you're just like, well, then, you're crazy. and Crazy um, and super-powered now. Yes, crazy and super-powered. Um, she purely because she can't feel anything. She's like Bane with beauty cream. <laughs> 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 oh, look at me. I'm so beautiful. Ooh. Like, that would be Bane on beauty cream, I think. <laughs> like, look at my face. Ooh. That had to be Tom Hardy's voice as well. Oh, it's got to be. Oh, Bane feels warm and beautiful inside. Oh, Bane rubs lotion on it. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> anyways, that would have actually saved this movie. To, let's be honest, an actual villain from the comics tied to it, but no, we got just we just a non boss, <laughs> <laughs> typical Streets of Rage endgame boss. <laughs> like exactly, pretty much it. No, Streets of Rage has some credit here. This movie does not. Yeah, well, I'll give you that. Um, but yeah, you know, boss gets flung out the window, dies. Then the police officer, <laughs> the police officer <laughs> says, "If patience is back in our cell by the morning, like we 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 can we can just say that you know Catwoman and patience aren't the same people." Yeah. And it's just like, oh wow, you this is this is what are you mean no one's checking on her like to make <laughs> sure she's okay and the time she's been away she's been away for like four hours like you know it's <laughs> but you know cinema magic cinema realness 
Um, Continuity. Go, no, no, don't get. Maybe, obviously, this film just tells you that policemen don't do their jobs, and um, <laughs> I don't mean that. They do a valuable some, service. Some, some do. <laughs> they, they do a valuable service to us all. Um, but yes, so the film ends. You know, she, it implies that she she leaves a letter for the crazy cat lady who mentored her, um, Doctor Cat Strangelove, um, <coughs> which I'm calling her, and. Um, the, the police officer that you know lets her get away and says, "Oh, you can't live a life with me. People like me live too fast for like people like you." Something like that. Yeah, she just disappears, and you know that's it. And the the last scene does kind of imply that she went to Gotham because the city's dark, it's moody, it looks like oh, Gotham. The, the I will say this: the city that she's in now at night time is dark and very gothic. Mm. Well, so it's never really. It's it's never actually said where she is, is it? Well, she does say she left. She yeah. Left town. So I'm just gonna hope that she went to Gotham. But then again, this has nothing to do with any Catwoman, Selena Kyle, or anyone else that's taking the mantle. So she could have went to bloody Metropolis for all we know. You know, keep in continuity with things, with how things have went with relation to the rest of the DC oh, universe. Oh, she could have went anywhere. Oh, she could have just went to you know Edinburgh. You know, for all we know. Really. Yeah. The Edinburgh you know, like nice. anywhere. But, you know, the film is a disgrace, in my opinion. If I had to give it any word, it would be disgrace. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I, there, there are good parts. The, the, the f- your fight scenes are well choreographed. No, they're I not. Yeah, they are. The, but the jewelry heist bit in the middle is kind of good. The one-on-one fight with the henchman that chased her into the waste pipe that's good the end fight scene not so much i've got to be honest the story like as a whole rotten absolutely rotten <sighs> like see if here's look- here's my main issue the whole powers thing right see if they just went oh we're doing a a comic book style action movie and the woman has cat powers I would be happy with that, but just there's there's no ties to the the origins of actual cat yeah, women. Well, it's not got anything saying like, oh, there was a cat woman in Gotham years ago or something. Like even if I throw back to Michelle Pfeiffer or anything, there's no connection to actual cat woman DC comics. There, there's nothing. The only connection apart is from the, wi- the is the but the then again is the credit at the start. Yeah, based uh, on a character created by Bob Kane. Yeah, that uh, that's it. Like, see if they just went, oh, this is a different character. Like, okay, you'd be like, oh, it's a total rip off a of cat woman because you know someone dresses up as a cat, a female dresses up as a cat, and she steals jewelry and she stops crime and whatever. Yeah, cool, I'm fine with that. But to label it as cat woman is a disservice. To the character. Yeah, the the film d- definitely doesn't help her. And I think my problem with it is just gen- generally everything about it. I don't, I can't see anything redeeming about it. Apart from the fact that I laughed a few times. Oh, we, we, we laughed many couple, times. Uh, but uh, it wasn't uh, happy laughs, it was sad laughs. It wasn't like, oh, we're happy with what's going on. Like, you know, it was sort of like we're laughing at how mental this is. Yeah. You know, so, like I say... I'm happy it never got a sequel. <laughs> so am I. And so... I uh, don't even want to rate it. So I so would Warner, it. to be honest. Uh, estimated making of the movie. How much did it cost to make? Uh, estimated 100 million. To make it? Yes. Right, I'm going to say that it made less than 100 million. You back. would be correct in that. I'll, I'll let you go. Oh. I'll let you go further. Because mm. uh, I've got domestic, which will be US... And foreign, which is everywhere else. I'm going to say... So, in general, how much I think it made? So yes. I, I'm think did it make less than a million? <laughs> no, it actually did make something back. Oh, okay. Well, not I even, know. but... Did go it make f- about 10 million? Nope. I'll Lower let you try one more. Lower or higher? Higher. All right, okay. 50 million? 82 million it made back, which isn't a bad loss. But then again, 100 million, well, would that have included uh, their PR work as well? I, I imagine so. 
Yeah, well, they're overall budget. Yeah. Right, so, that, that so, it, it was a bit of a loss, but that that is still pretty decent. Eighty percent, eighty-two percent of what they spent. Yeah, eighty-two percent of what they spent. They still made a loss, but at the Aye. end of the day, it's like, who, who, what people like. I mean, we watch it now because it's, it's it's a luxury because we don't have to pay money. <laughs> we just pay ten. Oh, I've, I've, five I've, and ten I've paid people. like a pound twenty-five on Amazon for this DVD. <laughs> no, you didn't. That was for that and other films. <laughs> oh no, no, this this was what a pound twenty-five. Same with Green uh, Green Hornet. All right, I'm terribly sorry, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it obviously maybe at the time it, this was something that. You know, wasn't heard of it? Like maybe this was a different kind of superhero film that was gonna, you know, blow people away. People who knew who Catwoman was. I mean, see now, now we can look on the internet and we can go on Twitter and we can go on Facebook and we can go, oh my god, everybody's fucking hating this film. Like, you know, far my fuck got to see that. Like, you know, we can do that. But you know, then that the internet was still very fresh. Yeah. People, not everyone had a computer. You know, you had things like that. So people were, we, that was a time when people were just gone and gone on a whim. You yeah. see a film, you know, they're the days that you kind of miss, you know, the, the, it's films it, like this It's that more like basing the movie on yourself, whereas nowadays, every time there's a, like, a bad movie, and I'll talk to someone about it, and they'll be like, oh, oh that, that movie's shit, or that movie's whatever, and I'm like, well, I, they're, they're kind of going along with the majority, and I'm like, well, I still kind of want to see it to base my own opinion, like, all I heard from talking to people about reviewing this movie was, oh my god, it's like the worst superhero movie ever and blah blah blah, the the, the typical stuff, but we have seen some bad superhero movies, so I did kind of reserve my judgement until I'd seen it, and I'm I'm not going to argue with them. I'm not going to say that this is the worst yet, because I've not seen Green Lantern yet. Oh, wait, you've actually not seen Green Lantern? No. Oh, wow. And I think Green Lantern might, might tipple this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a joint first. <laughs> no, well, I, I'm, okay, I'm I'm fucking biased. But Green Lantern's better than this. Of course you would say that. You've got a Green Lantern tattoo. Of course I do. <laughs> well, who, who doesn't? People that don't are just sad, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a Green Lantern tattoo. Bitch. You're my sad pal, though. Huh. Well, yeah. play. <laughs> well, on that note, we yeah. didn't like the film. Uh, what what would you rate it, James? What would uh, you uh, rate uh, this uh, abysmal piece this, of art? This classic masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even rate it, mate. I don't even rate it. It's. I feel bad for Halle Berry because she was obviously trying, but she's trying. She's tried too hard. hard. That's that's what it is, but. You know, fair play, yeah. You know, she gave it a go. Out of ten, mate? Nothing, mate. Really? Really? Really nothing. Wow. I I, I get nothing for that. Wow. Thing. And I base that on the fucking, the horrible puns, the, the horrible story, the horrible acting, the horrible plot devices. You know, like, it's just, it, it's so basic. An infant could write this. And I'd be more proud of an infant. If Maybe an infant did, that's the thing. I'd be proud if an infant <laughs> wrote it. I'd be proud if a child wrote it. Because I'd be like, wow, that's actually something good that's came from a child. Like, <laughs> but... I don't... The, the film as a whole is just abysmally bad. It, it, it's an absolute cringe fest and it just kills me. What about you, Mario? What would you rate it? I would say... Like, there are some good points. The action scenes are kind of good. The story... Take away the origin and the story of Catwoman wanting to help her friend. I'm not calling her patience. Calling her Catwoman to kind of relate it back to comics. Catwoman's friend isn't well. That's a personal hit on her. So, there, there's genuine motive there of her wanting to be a good person. She steals jewellery, but, you know, does a good thing in the process and stuff. And, like, the the friendship between all the characters, like Catwoman and her friends and stuff, like, 
is a good thing. But overall, the rest of the story, the no ties to the Catwoman character other than her name it's being Catwoman. It's not a story I would personally associate with Catwoman. No, definitely no. If you told me the basis, like, like if you'd says, oh, in what film uh, did the superhero have to go up against a, a beauty corporation that was making a, a face cream that would reverse aging but disfigure the person who used it, I would not for a second think Catwoman. Nope. You know... Maybe poison ivy. Maybe. No. Chemicals, Maybe. plants. That would but that would go well. I think I think Catwoman needs a more a kind of a kind of road trip feely film. You know, a film where she's just gone about doing her own thing, and then you know she kind of gets caught up in things that you know she doesn't really want to get caught up in, because that tends to be the Catwoman way. You know, she'll do something, Batman comes in, stops her, or you know. You know, she does something to redeem herself and stuff like that. Be more recently, like with the Christopher Nolan films, you know, and The Dark Knight Rises. Um, I wasn't too keen about Catwoman in that either. Yeah. Because it felt like she wasn't that character. At the start it did, but when she started to actually be like, oh, I don't really care about Bruce Wayne, it became a very different story. It was very much a strong love story between them. Um, but I just want to see the Catwoman who's a badass, like, the the strong, independent character who takes no shit and does what she wants. Like, that's all I want. And y- she's got a lot of story, you know, she's got a best friend that she looks after, you know, she, she, you know, there's plenty of stuff there to work with. I think it's just, you know, you would need to, if you're going to do a Catwoman film, you've got to do a Catwoman film. This is not a Catwoman film to me. Exactly. And on that, I would say... I think I rated it, did I? No, you didn't rate it. Uh, <laughs> one out of ten. One out of ten. Well, I yeah. oh. It gets the big you tried sticker. The big pink you tried sticker. Like I said, if it wasn't called Catwoman, if the character wasn't called Catwoman, then I would probably rate it higher, but trying to tie well, it Well, she was, so, you know, it's getting <laughs> one star and that's the end of it. Um, I've had quite enough of talking about this, and you're going to have to, <laughs> you know, seriously do some magic on this because. But anyway, thank you for listening. If you've stuck with us this long, watch the film if you you want. If you do, nosebleed. Like if you want a nosebleed. If you want a migraine. Yeah, we've just gotten to the end for the second time. Second now. time. So, <laughs> have a nice day. Salutations, and we'll see you next time.